It's good to see y'all. It was, I was getting ready to give some really, uh, the computer wasn't working. So I said, I know that Williams got some good computers. <laughs> well, we, we, we are fixed and, and it's, I'm very glad to be here. And I'm very, uh, very happy. I've heard so many good things about this college. Some of you don't know my background. I am a, have been an activist. Um, uh, kind of part of the intro, the president um, of the Hip Hop Caucus, not quite so much the founder, but that actually was a group. Um, no, 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 it was a, it was a group. Um, it was the Hip Hop Summit Action Network, um, Citizen Change, and um, uh, Voice Your Choice, which was, I worked for all three at the time. This was in the 2003, 2004 election, and Hip Hop Summit with Russell Simmons organization, um, Citizen Change was uh, Diddy's organization, more known for Vote or Die, um, and uh, Jay-Z had Voice Your Choice, and so I worked for all, with all three of them. And then after that, um, there was an uproar from the people in hip hop because they felt that, and rightfully so, they felt that it was very grass tops and not enough grass roots. Um, it was, you know, very much celebrity driven and they wanted more um, folks to be engaged around the country. And so they decided to create the Hip Hop Caucus. Um, and so at that time I was Russell Simmons' book director and then they uh, tapped me. The Hip Hop Caucus turned uh, 10 years last year. Um, and so uh, it's really great to still be part of that organization in leading it up. And it was really after Hurricane Katrina, um, the first year we got started, that we saw um, that we wanted to, we had to do something. Um, when Hurricane Katrina hit, I'm also from Louisiana, uh, was born in Shreveport. And so um, we saw the devastations of uh, climate change up close. Uh, we particularly also saw um, poor and poor people of color left behind. We saw them, them being on the front lines of the devastations of climate change. And so we got involved, we have been involved, and um, I'll get more into this. Someone actually, what you see behind me, I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna, I, got a, I got a special treat for Williams today. Special <laughs> treat. Um, a couple of years ago, um, Discovery Channel did a documentary on the uh, Hip Hop Caucus um, that they aired um, in 2011. Um, on, our, on, our, on our green work. Um, we were the first organization to launch a green campaign, acts launch a green campaign by President Obama on August 4th, his birthday, 2009. And then they kind of followed us around up through Copenhagen um, in 2010 with the cap and trade. Um, legislation being put forth uh, in Congress and that or did not work. Um, and then uh, this right here, Jason Pollack, who actually is the protege for Michael Moore, has now done a new documentary following us around when we were doing um, Act on Climate, the Carbon Rule, and bringing awareness to that, as well as my efforts now to get artists um, from hip hop involved with the climate movement. So you get, so this is this fresh, nobody, this is, you, this is the rough cut, which I decided to, uh, your peers outside was so impressive before I came in that I decided to share that with you. So uh, my only ask is this, is that you can definitely toot out all the things that I might say or do during this presentation, but the only other thing I actually like to do is say, we just saw this great documentary, put on, just don't, 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 don't do that because then uh, uh, the folks from, um, folks who do the documentary will come in, will find me. Um, is it okay? Okay. First, uh, before we get that started, let me just also commend um, the, um, the students who are, are part of the Divest Williams. Are any of you students here who are part of that campaign? Yeah, you can make a little noise. This is the part of Hip Hop Climate Change panel. You can make a little, little noise. Yeah, uh, yeah good. So I just want to commend you. Um, I am just killing the Williams technology today. I'm destroying it. That's, so. 
Um, and I'll, I'll, what I'll do is I'll make sure I'll, I'll play the video quickly. So you won't, we won't, we won't you'll get, we'll get right to it. Get all the, getting all the notes and the letters going on now. You know, the, the, oh, we, we, gonna, we gonna see it now. <laughs> so while she blocks that out, tries to block that out, where y'all read, you know, like, well, y'all can read so well, they can like, they can like read, they can like, <laughs> <laughs> you want to take me? Yeah, there you go. Yeah, I'm take that out. There you go. <laughs> Give you a little privacy. On that. <laughs> so one of the things I just want to commend you again. I know that you have an election ballot coming up soon, pretty uh, soon on the issue, and that's very important. It's, it's also very important what you do, because someone who travels around to colleges to discuss this issue, um, and coming up is Global Divestment Day on Valentine's Day on 13th and 14th. Um, I actually will be at New York City, um, myself and Malik Youssef, who actually will be divesting. Malik Youssef, who actually produced the Clement album. I hope you got a flyer for that. He actually is Kanye West's producer, and he actually had a little bit of time in his hands because Kanye was getting married to Kim Kardashian, and so I kind of stole him to do some climate change stuff, which was a whole lot of, what? What are you talking about? So yes, he wants to do an album on this, and he did it, and it went, it went really, really well. Um, oh yeah, put it, put it back then. Plug it back in. It's, uh, yeah, it's not, sorry. Oh, I think you gotta. <laughs> so this is actually the great thing about being part of the hip hop. So I just like to uh, say this. So when you're in my position and you're forced to speak, so my job is to like be the guy who speaks before like say there's a Nas concert and then they say okay to do the, do the little thing on climate change before the Nas concert. Everybody's been there it's like two in the morning at a Nas concert, a lot of alcohol, and then they push me on stage, and it's like, you, you ain't Nas. <laughs> I go, yes, but our climate is changing. <laughs> Get off the stage, we want. <laughs> and they were having warming, and they go through that. But, so my job now is to live through that and I actually do pretty well. So because of that, I think we can, we can handle this component. But for real, there it is. Give it, give it up, give it up, give it up, give it up for the. So I want to just, I want to actually preview this. So this is what this is. Um, and let me actually just say this on the real note. The reality is that um, yesterday, I was very honored to put out, yesterday was Rosa Parks Day, and I was very honored to put out a joint article with EPA Administrator Gina McCarthy. And that's a big deal, because when you're the president of the Hip Hop Caucus, which is a big deal, but also to go with the EPA Administrator to ask you to do a joint article during Black History Month is an amazing thing. That's, that's, that's a really big thing. And so we put out an article yesterday, and I hope you will Google it, um, regarding climate justice um, in that regard. But the, re the reality is this, the reason why this is such a big deal and why you're so important, is that while this is Black History Month and while we're talking about civil rights movements, um, where we are right now um, is that we are in a position that in the 20th century, they fought for equality. And there's still some room there. I know there were some other panels that were here before, and there's definitely some room there pushing for equality. And I think that's why this whole day was created. Um, but the other side to that is that if that with climate change and our reliance on fossil fuels, is that we're also now not only dealing with equality, which this is, we're now also dealing with existence. And so for what you do right now uh, in 2015, um, and what other folks do, what we all do on this planet of ours, um, really will matter for those in 2115, if they exist or not. So it's different. It's one thing that if, we, if I couldn't drink from the same water fountain um, or go to the hotel or have to ride on the back of the bus, that's a horrible existence. It's another thing when I can't drink the water or can't breathe the air. And so in the article, um, one of the original members of the last two remaining living members of the four um, North Carolina A&T students who actually went to the lunch counter in Greensboro 
actually has said um, that this is, that was lunch kind of moment then, but this is our lunch kind of moment for the 21st century. And that's real, and I believe that. So all jokes aside, and we're gonna have some fun, I'm, and I'm super excited to be here, and this is kind of how I am on this issue, because it's a heavy issue. Because it really is, it means that you have to man, sometimes maybe question even yourself. Okay, I'm here at Williams. Um, what, is, what will my degree mean? Um, uh, what will that mean for humanity? What will it mean for the next generation? Um, is it just a piece of paper? Or, the, or will I able to use my life or, or, or our lives um, collectively to fight for when we're long gone from here, to fight for that next generation? So we're in a crazy moment in time, and there are those in the fossil fuel industry who do not want to transition. Um, they do not. Um, they are hell-bent on making their profits. Um, and they're going to do everything to hold on. I um, mean, we've been here before. We've been here with women's rights. We're still here with, with gay rights. We're fighting that one, but, but we're, we're winning on different fronts. Definitely here with slavery. We, 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 when, when organized people come together, organized people beats organized money every single time. And so we're here again, though. This is where we are. So uh, with that, um, I'm going to pick up my coat, and I'm going to show you a little bit of this this, this, uh, this, 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 this uh, presentation. Um, let's go. Um, and where this picks up is uh, part of my day job and getting all these artists engaged. Um, so we had Elvoner, Neo, Common. Um, man, this is long. Uh, we now are getting other artists engaged. Um, uh, Pharrell is now getting engaged, has been engaged, and others. And so our goal with this, is really with this album, and I'm kind of working backwards now, is that we would be able to mainstream, to some degree, um, the climate movement's process. And so, and I want to definitely get into your heads, because I showed you a lot. Did y'all like that? Or, was that okay? Y'all felt that it kind of enjoyable? That was... I hope that you get, when, in, the, in the film, you get to see a lot of different things, too, with a lot of the artists struggling with the issue. Um, and also on tour, you probably didn't see, that was Amanda Seals and D1 um, and Raheem Devon. And Raheem Devon's also on the album. And so that's an important piece for this reason. So when I first got involved with the climate movement, um, I instantly saw that, um, when I would go to a lot of climate rallies, um, and my dear friend, uh, Bill McKibben, who I'm very close with, um, I would go, it would be a lot of people who were white, to be honest. And I would say that this is not good because we're dealing with a human issue. And so we have to break down those walls. And I felt that our generation could do that because we could use culture um, and, that, and when they, we know we have this vehicle of using culture, it could be in a way that we can then cross over cultural boundaries. Um, but even in that, the movement itself was very siloed. Even in the movement itself was siloed, meaning that you would have the divestment movement, multiple removal, Keystone XL, fracking, um, uh, LNG, um, and it would, be a, it would be a very siloed movement even by issue and then it would clearly be even more um, siloed by race. Um, so you had to remember the justice community. And a lot of times, but this film is so important, I think, I think a lot of folks, even the climate movement, have never even seen the side of the movement. They've never even seen that this is a whole part of the movement that people are fighting, like those in Newport News or in, or in Louisiana or in New York. People of color on the forefront of this issue. And they've never, so I'm hopeful that also, this film will be very important because it will also show a lot of people that um, there are many people who are engaged um, in this issue. So what I want to do is talk about a few things. Um, uh, and then I want to hear from you, actually, on whatever you want to talk about in, on this issue. But what I really want to get across to you is this. Um, when we were on tour, on this tour, um, this came on the heels of what my hat says, um, fighting with the, uh, the Keystone XL pipeline. 
um, which is a pipeline that wants to be built from um, Alberta, Canada, and kind of then go through all the way to Texas, and pretty much is this basically this a, a, a pipeline that could be a pipeline for destruction, in essence. Um, and burning of the tar sands oil will be the burning of the dirtiest oil. And what you also saw in the film, you saw, and I cut out parts in Detroit and we were in other parts of Ohio, what you saw over and over again too, which was really sad, will bring you to tears, you saw that they would put power plants right next to schools. Right next to schools. We would see kids on swings and there's the power plant and you would be wondering why. And this is important because recently with the Black Lives Matter movement and the hand up, don't shoot, as well as I can't breathe, Eric Garner, for instance, in Long Island, New York, um, died, but many of you probably saw, by an illegal chokehold, um, which caused outrage for a number of reasons, not only because what we saw, but also that we definitely need grand jury reform, um, and, there's a, and it's a problem with our system. But even more so with Eric Garner, with I Can't Breathe, that Eric Garner had asthma. He lived in Long Island. And what's interesting about Eric Garner is that Long Island received an F um, from New York City, that, that borough, because it has the worst pollution because of the, the power plants. But not only did Eric Garner have asthma, Eric Garner had six children. All of Eric Garner's children have asthma. So why this I Can't Breathe is so important is that even if Eric Garner had not died, um, which people are talking about Black Lives Matter, if he had not died, this would, will continue. And more people died in New York City due to bad and dirty air than they did to gun violence. And so this killer here is a killer because those who are in these corporations are getting away with that. And this is why we have to come together as a movement um, to change that process. Um, and so in that, um, one of the things that has come up many times um, is the issue of where do we go from here? Um, I mentioned divestment, which is a very important strategy. It is critical that all of our institutions that are based upon fighting for the next generation and, ed and educating the present generation cannot be making money and growing their endowments off of the death of current and future generations. That cannot happen. Because if that is happening, then the reality is that you then become complicit in the destruction of humanity. If you are part of an institution that is and continues to benefit from that, then no matter how you put it, if you're a faculty and you're saying, well, this is my research and I'm getting money from this, or a student or an administrator, then you are clearly engaged and a part of that process. So as I close, and I definitely want to hear, I don't, hope we have a, I think we have a good time for Q&A, right? Great. And then you can ask any questions from the film or how your artists get involved, and you missed, that. actually is a part there where um, I leave uh, here and I go home for a quick second to put on another black suit. <laughs> and then I hit to LA because we're doing the Green Grammys, because the artists, too, are now organizing themselves. And they are now, what you see, Common and Anthony Smith, who you didn't see, but is on there as well, and Malik Youssef and others, are now organizing artists because they now have the ball. But I want to just leave you with this before you get to Q&A. Um, I really want to stir your soul. Before I start with Hip Hop Caucus, I um, um, taught at Georgetown, and I was actually um, working with a number of communities in DC. Um, and 
Because I was in a lot of these hard-pressed communities, I was asked to do a funeral. And this funeral that I was asked to do was a young girl um, whose mother was there, I think she had six or five children, I'm not sure, the exact amount of children. But this one girl was the girl, um, she was 14, who was, um, and they had a power plant like this that you saw in the film in Southeast, which is a rough part in DC. Um, and the mother had to play Russian roulette. In other words, do I feed my family or do I get this little girl an inhaler? Um, and this little girl was the one who would take care of the, of the other little ones. So she's like the little girl who would take care of the other ones. But she had asthma. And so she would have asthma attacks. And, you know, they would get her, her inhaler or they would help her. But the mother lost. And that little girl died. And they asked me to do that funeral. And the entire time I'm doing this funeral, the casket is like right here. Um, the mother is trying to get into the casket. Literally, the casket is almost falling over. And the mother is trying to, aunts and sisters and nieces and uncles are trying to pull her away. And this happens all over our country literally by those from Exxon and BP and Shell, they are so concerned about making their profits. And we have all the answers to transition from fossil fuels to clean energy, but they refuse. They would rather have this happen with this little girl and her mother to climb into the casket than simply begin the transition from fossil fuels to clean energy. So I did send nothing to you at Williams because you are key. You had one of the greatest institutions. You're some of the, you are some of the greatest minds. Um, we have one of the biggest problems. But I believe that like in the words of Dr. King when he came and spoke 51 years ago and he said he had a dream that we can come together, black, white, brown, and yellow, and we could all live together, um, that we would one day be free. We'd be free at last, free at last. Thank God Almighty, we're free at last. I also believe that together, if we come together and we work together, that we can also have our children one day sing and they might not say free at last, but they will say fossil free at last. <laughs> fossil free at last. Thank God Almighty, we are fossil free at last. Uh, Williams, we have a tough charge ahead of us. Um, but I'm a believer in humanity. And I'm a believer that we can and we will transition. Um, it will be a tough ride. Um, it is one that already has claimed many, many lives. But this is our moment. This is our lunch counter moment for the 21st century. Thank you. So, questions? Yes, yes, yes. So we start right here. Okay, so you mentioned where we can go from here. Yep. So my question is in terms of structural and institutional changes that mm -hmm. can be made in the future, what would you say are three things in terms of policy? So you mentioned power plans, yep. right? There are regulations. What are three specific things that can be done? And then given the fact that we have activism with people like Troy Carter, Van Jones, Douglas Frank, who's a scholar at Tulane, who's mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, you asked three good questions in there. Um, let me take the institution, then I'll go to the legislation, 
and then I'd go to the academic. Um, so if institutionally, as, as a movement, as a climate change movement, um, what we can do, first is what I said earlier, which is that we are going to have to um, invest our resources into diverse communities to be more aware of this issue. And that's happening. I'm very happy to say that groups like NRDC, Sierra Club, EDF, um, 350 and others are beginning to recognize the importance of investing in a much more diverse climate change movement. Um, but where we are right now, it's not enough. And also we are going to um, begin to have, we're going to have to as institutions invest in our, in our, in our academies as well. Um, so that we can have scholarships and funds for students um, who can begin to not only rely upon institution to then wave through this process, but also begin to um, have much more deliberate focus on not just those who are coming up in the scientific component, but also from the activism way and demonstration way as well. Um, clearly, we have been focused from an institutional standpoint that we have done, 2014 was an amazing year for the institution and the movement of climate change. Um, the People's Climate March in New York City in September, we brought 400,000. Um, the ongoing Keystone XL protest, not too far from here, those are, we are Seneca Lake fighting fracking. Um, the divestment movement around the country, which has, has had some peaks and valleys. Um, but is now moving toward World Investment Day and is still growing as it gets more sophisticated around endowments and adding the invest side to the divest side as well. Um, the issue of us looking at the uh, Federal Energy uh, Regulatory Commission, FERC, and seeing what they and can't do. So in other words, we've, the institutional side has become much more targeted and has grown and has also become much more aggressive. Um, the climate change movement, Sierra Club, up until 2013, um, had never done civil disobedience before. And so in their 125 year, up until that point, um, they had never done it, um, and they have now. And many others are now more willing to put their bodies against the machine to bring it to a grinding halt. That's exciting because it would happen more on the grassroots level, but not from the grass top level and the bigger institutions. Um, and I think that from an institutional standpoint, um, being focused on Paris, on the UN negotiations coming up in December, is very important for all of us. And that actually leads into the next phase, legislation. And so we have a domestic approach, uh, which is both federal, state and local, as well as an international approach um, regarding the legislation. Um, on the domestic side, um, you're right. Congress um, is, unfortunately, um, there's a lot of money in politics. And in that regard, and since we just celebrated the five year anniversary of Citizens United, um, since that has been day back and just pay for politicians, they've been doing before, but now it's just open. Um, <laughs> And so there is a gridlock there because um, there are politicians who are literally um, voting against the interests of their own community. Um, but we should not give up on that. There is still a number of uh, legislation, even if it's symbolic, that's being put forth. The, 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 the recent legislation that put forth regarding is climate change real and holding them just to that standard. So even, if, so even though it's not necessarily going to be moved, that's important. And then on the other side of that, it's important for us to definitely support and encourage the president to hold firm on his, on his amazing awakening on climate change. I mean, I was there and actually launched the first campaign with him in 2009. And so I've actually seen him up close to see how much he has just moved on this issue. And so where he is now, being able to veto the Keystone XL pipeline is very important for us as a, as a as a movement from a legislative standpoint. Um, and I think the internationally, the third arm for that 
Well, let me just say this locally. Locally is also very important because locally is where we can get wins. It's where you as students and faculty and, and, and staff can get wins right here locally um, in regards to um, creating ordinances and policies that most, most look like what we want to see. And we've seen that when local um, policies go forth, it has a huge impact on the movement as well. I mean, the movement is so encouraged when they hear that Oakland has, the city has voted to do this, or you know what I mean? That, that's, that's very important. Um, and then internationally, I think Paris is, this, is critical. Um, in about three months, um, there will be uh, the, we, we just had Lima um, with the UN negotiations this past December. But in about three months, that will be an important time for us to shape, make sure that we are holding the biggest polluters, we are one of them, um, and really holding those standards accountable. That can come through what President Obama is doing and that aspect. That also will come through the carbon, uh, the, the carbon rule, which, which, which uh, caps existing and pre-existing power plants. Um, and those are very important for us because those are local standpoints. The third part of your question is the academy. Now the academy is very interesting. You mentioned my, some of my, my very good friends in there, um, as you probably already know, you probably well, you mentioned the question, but my van and them, and, um, and others. Um, before I get to the academy, I just want to say that I think that the faith component with the academy, the Pope will be coming out with his encyclical, um, probably in June, um, and there are 1.2 billion Catholics. And so when the Pope comes out with that, and it'll be, it, even though I don't think he's gonna come out with divestment, it still will be very hard, it'll be still hard hitting. And so I think that's an important component there as well. Um, and then the fun part, the academy. This is where divestment, and I'm clearly a divestment person, so I do think that that's, this is an, actually is an important component to our discussion, is that divestment um, in regards to the academy is the most important things that we can do within the academy. I do believe that. Um, because um, that will actually hit the fossil fuel industry where, where in, in, its, in, in its pockets, where it relies the most upon. And I do think, if, for instance, if they, if they had listened to the students a year ago, um, then when crude oil was $100 a barrel, and they had got rid of that at that time, then literally a lot of endowments would be better off today. So by not listening to students, a lot of them are actually losing money because they're still being reliant on a debt industry. And, not, not, and so they're literally losing. So there are some endowments that are literally now that were not as much as, as, as Williams, but I think it's, I don't know, I think last is like 2.3 or whatever it is to run that. But there's some that are more modest, like 90 million, 100 million, that have lost half of their endowment because they did not listen to students. Now is the time to listen to students. But it's also time, now the time for faculty members to be courageous and to now stand up and to say, what is the kind of research that I am doing? What is it that I need to then make sure that I can move as well? And the faculty senates need to then be as vocal as the students on this issue. And I think that's, those are the three tiers that I think that we need to move for. And then this last piece, either we shape policy or policy will shape us. And so I think that we need to be in a position that as a movement that we are constantly shaping policy to create change. No, most definitely. Um, so my question is, um, so basically like hip hop is an art form, right? It's like associated with social change, um, I don't know, like expression sometimes of like political agenda, but also just like, uh, like experience, but it's also, like, but it's also um, really heavily associated with like the but the industry, right? The hip hop industry can sell all sorts of products based on the art, right? Um, and so, I guess I'm wondering how, like, in your everyday job, how that tension, how you feel that tension, if you feel that tension, and how the best way you found to navigate that is. Um, explain tension. Explain what you mean by tension some more. So I just know what you're. There's like, I think there's like a tension between like hip hop as a form of like social change, like um, expressing. Yeah. social messages and hip-hop is like an industry, right? Because it's like, yeah. um, it's 
it's a form that you can manipulate to whatever, to yep. whatever end, right? Because it, it, it gets you feeling a certain way, it gets you thinking a certain way. Um, but if, like, because you can use, you can also use the hip hop industry to fund these kinds of social changes that you want to see. But I don't know, sometimes I see it. No, no, that's a great. No, that's a great question. There's the hip hop culture side, and then there's also probably more different ways of the rap and the music side. And there's a tension sometimes between that, um, and there's also hip hop, this industry, yeah. business side. Um, so first, let me answer it this way. Um, I'm when I came into this process, I wasn't. I mean, I love hip hop and music good i love it right and I, it it got me through college right there are times when i was just going through and i had to you know i, I used to love moral technique right or uh you know mob deep whatever i just had to crank it up high right just to get me through um or to annoy my you know my roommate whichever one i thought was you know would work at the time but um it's important to know this my background with hip hop, that I didn't come to this as, a, as an artist. I came to this as an activist. Um, I have, I come from a family that is middle class. I don't come from the mean streets of nowhere, right? Both my parents um, are college professors. My father was a dean at Howard University in African American Studies. And my mom was, had her PhD in psychology. Um, that's important because I grew up in that and then that's my also. I have my, I have my doctorate now and a couple of masters. And the reason why it's important because when I would go different places and they would say hip hop, I could instantly see, even I went to a, a church or a mosque or whatever, or well, definitely a community, there was instantly this devaluing of credibility, right? They didn't even know my background, they didn't even know. You know, I'm, I'm Dr. Yearwood, and that's what I am. But, you know, just they instantly devalued that because they just put it. But for me, what I saw was the power and the genius outside the academy. I saw that when I listened to the poetry or the lyrics or saw the hustle or the grind, I saw genius. And that's, and for me also, it was humbling because where I came from, be, having, you know, at the time teaching at Georgetown and doing different things, you know, all those things, once you get stripped away, who are you really? Like, who are you really? You know, what are you, what are you here for? And so for me, that was very important. So hip hop, my hat, my Nike boots allows for that to just to be to be stripped every single time, for you to see me just as ref. That's important because that didn't earn earn. I, I can't come to you as you know the guy who was teaching here or doing this or doctor so and so. And also, I'm also equal with my community, so I'm no longer also with my community talking to them, but I'm also talking with them in solidarity. And that's just, I just want to give this a little bit of background. So when I came into the hip hop process, I came in first understanding that there was genius in hip hop, that, that I was no better and no smarter because I was, came from a certain different community and was middle class than it was the brother from the Bronx or Brooklyn who was actually, truth be told, I can tell you was much smarter than I was in some cases, how he can just think and what he can do and he never finished high school. But it's clear genius. And I can see that, I can see that. And I begin to think if, if we can mobilize that side, which you can clearly see for change, then what could we do? And that's where we begin to go. Now the friction, I would take you to the friction. There, there's always been friction within the industry side. When I first, when I, this is when I first worked for Russell and Diddy. I mean, clearly one of the, I think, known stories is that me and Russell fell out not in a bad way, but just in a way that I really wanted, the people were calling for more grassroots movement. I would come to a gathering like this, and you would be like, we want to be more engaged. And he had one that's more artists, which is where he came from. That's where he, where he lives. So he wanted LL and other artists to show up. And you know, I'm like, well, people want to have their voices heard. And so that's how the caucus was actually created. 
It was created out of that, out of that friction. So the friction you're talking about creates, helped create the caucus. Um, and then I think that within hip hop too, um, for me, I think that there's a trust factor. As anybody knows, like common. I think that there's another part to this. Our movement sometimes can be very usatory. Um, so that when I went to Common or Malik Youssef or, I mean, right now I'm talking to Jay-Z, does climate change and other people, and Kanye is interested. He actually wants to do Earth Day because he heard, he heard the album. Um, and there's a lot of funny stories there too. But um, <laughs> in those conversations. But um, it's, it's, it's a constant friction because also in hip hop, I'm, I'm president of the Hip Hop Caucus, but also has people like the Siri X and Immortal Technique and Nas and Brother Ali. And so there's even, a, is he, and then there's, a, there, there's the, the sisters in hip hop from MC Light to Amanda Seals to others. So there's a lot, and then a new artist who will come up down in Ferguson and other spots through the movement. So I, I'm, I'm, in, I'm in all of that friction, constantly. So, but I think that makes the movement stronger if you, if you allow for that transparency to happen. It's hard, it's hard. We have a lot of disagreements, um, a lot of folks at different levels. But for me, the one thing that helps our movement in the hip hop side is love. Um, which means that if we can come to a room and love one another and know what we're trying to fight for our people, then I think we, we, we will get to We'll get there, but there's a lot. I mean, it's a lot on the climate side right now with this project. This actually is going great. I tell you, climate movement side, you haven't seen nothing yet. There are some amazing things that are happening on the movement side. I'm also close with Mark Ruffalo, who's the Hulk, and, um, and others. He's trying to get all the adventures to be a part, and now they're now talking to one another. So for me, it's cool, because I'm like, you know, I like the Hulk, you know what I'm saying? You know, I like, that's the Hulk. You know, I'm like, I told Mark, we're gonna do a little video with you where you like green and get big, you know, you know, you know <laughs> all these great things. But I mean, it's just cool to see them work together because now Common wants to work with Mark. Uh, Leo um, wants to work with 2 Chains, which is important because 2 Chains wants to be a part of this movement too. So that's important. And where they come in at is also important. It's funny because they come in different, different levels, like, 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 we, like we all do. Another question? Have you seen any artists change their minds about climate change? Like going into it, just an idea, and then coming out with it? That's a great question. That's a great, great question. A lot of times, I don't know where this came from. A lot of artists don't, first, sometimes don't call it climate change, they'll say climate control. Now, I don't know where they get climate control from. I think because the car commercials say, I, I, I'm always I'm trying to figure out, where did you get this, and they will say it. We gotta fight climate control. Where did you get climate control from? <laughs> and so it's funny to watch them though, transform even that, to go from saying climate control to saying, to being climate change and the, and the effects. That's important. Um, no, I see that all the time, it's great. And I think if we're seeing now, for me, what I've learned working with artists, is um, again, you want to use their genius to produce what they need to produce. You saw in the video with Common. Um, they were in the studio and they were writing, I didn't come to them with lyrics. Our movement sometimes is very anal in this regard. These are the talking points. This is what you need to say. And then they'll get it and it won't, it won't vibe. So when I come, we rap, talk about what the issue is. We go through it, step back, come back. And then they begin to, you saw in the film, a common, people don't ever see this side. They begin to really go through. And if you, ever, and if you check, please listen to the album, Chub Chub in the Water, you can really hear where he comes up. And he begins to link in that song, for instance, like the water um, is dirty like the police. And so he begins to link a lot of things together through his work Chicago and, and his, his where he is now, and then he goes forth. Also, I, I do see a lot of artists like, Common's one, but I see, I, I don't wanna use Common because he's conscious. You know, conscious, you know, Common used to be a gangbanger before, if you don't know that. So I wanna use 2 Chains. Cause I love 2 Chains, that's my, that's my guy. That's my, that's my guy. No, no, you don't know. He, I had the most, the greatest conversations with 2 Chains. One, he's, one, so you probably don't know, 2 Chains is a little older. 
So we're in the same age bracket. So two chains is just th like 35, right? He's older. You wouldn't, you know, that's, but that's his, his stick. He's little, he looks, he cares for younger crowd. They might know two chains. Okay, good. Make sure y'all, because I, I, nah, because I spoke so, I spoke somewhere before, and I mentioned T.I., and they kept saying I.T. I said, no, it ain't I.T., it's T.I. So, 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 2 Chainz is super smart. Matter of fact, when he went to college, um, he graduated with a 4.0. Um, super smart when we talk. But then when he has his music, it's crazy music. All of my birthday is, uh, and it's just crazy music, right? But in that, he never had the space to like grow. So he got him involved with what he wanted to do. I said, well, you know, what do you want to advocate for? Because what he wanted to do was fight for felon. He was an ex-felon. He wanted to fight for felons to vote. So he came in that way. Now he fights for marijuana uh, legalization. So now he's there. Now he's moving to, to climate change. And he is one of the most articulate I mean, he truly is somebody who can literally go from that Malcolm Little to a Malcolm X. Like, he is transforming before my eyes um, to the point where it's changing him. Very much how it changed David Banner. It was very, very similar like this. Where it changed David Banner was very much on one kind of music, and he just transformed as time went on with the movement. You, and that's one thing you have to know as, a move, as, a, as, a, as part of the movement. You control when the, when the movement is weak, so is the music. But when the movement is strong, so is the music. Right now, when our movement is strong, the music reflects that. You hear a lot more things in regards to what's happening. Any more questions? No more? Oh, I guess. Go ahead. Uh, <clears throat> when you get to meet these artists, what is the hardest part about, what is the process like of trying to get someone to, I would think it'd be difficult to get them to balance their artistic integrity with the messages you want them to present. So you're with Malik, but he's, he's boys with Kanye, but we've heard Kanye's like last two singles, but they're not about climate change. And I'm guessing with a guy like Kanye, he's very much prides himself as an artist and with his vision of what he wants to do. And that, trying to insert these global warming messages might be stilting that artistic direction. And that, what, what does it take to get a guy like Kanye or a guy like 2 Chainz for their next song instead of being birthday to be about global warming, about climate change? Like what is that process like of getting them to rap about that without feeling like they're selling out to a cause that is not the artistic reason they got into music to begin with? That's a great, great question. Um, you guys are really smart here at Williams. Um, that's a great question for this reason, I'm going to tell you why. Because um, most people ask that same question, but it's usually asked how to get them to do something, not how to weave their existing talents in with the movement itself, which is how you frame that. Um, this, is, this is actually very important because um, it's very difficult. But let me say this, though, in that regard. It first takes this. As a movement, we need to do what we need to do first and be as engaged on this issue. So if Kanye, Common, uh, MC Light, you name it, 2 Chains, T.I., aren't down, to be honest, so what? To be real honest, so what? Because we're going to roll what we gotta roll with, because it's still real. We're still fighting for the next generation. We're still fighting now for our generation. So there's no doubt that we have to do what we have to do. But in that realness, in that dedication to what we're doing, then, and we go to them and say that you have a talent, you wanna be part of this movement, then they know me wanna be on board. This is the thing that I try to get so many of us on the institutional side to not do. What they will do is have an artist for audience building. In other words, let me have Common show up at the Earth Day rally, perform his own songs. Folks will come really to the rally to see Common and they'll be amazed when everybody leaves when Common leaves. 
right? And then the same 15 people who on the issue are like, wow, we had Common here. He did his thing. He did a Common concert and then everybody left. The difference, what we need to do now is that we need to create, what we're creating is our Harry Belafonte's for the 21st century. We need to create our Eartha Kitts, our Dick Gregory's, those folks who are entwined in the movement at the civil rights movement, who are also funding the movement, putting their resources to the movement. That's what we need. And when they know they're being approached that way, I can't tell you how many no's I get. So when you see this, know that there are at least, at least, and there's no need to name because they might come around. There may be people who, who ain't with it in 2012 or 2010, but have not come around. But I get, I get no's so much from artists and managers who don't want to deal with that. Or if it gets a little crazy, because a good example of that, you know, when Drake, Drake, we did a, we did a whole thing with Drake. We did a whole green tour with Drake. Um, but when we had to go hard at Keystone, Drake was from Canada, you know, he kind of, he didn't quite back away, but it was like, I don't want to be good for my, you know, they just kind of slid back. I, I'm not going to bash him because I thanked him for what he did, for what he did. But your question is this, is that how do we then get these artists to be ingrained in our movement? I think it's very important for us because as we approach these artists, it has to be in sincere that we really want them to be a part of our movement. And it's not usatory. Even for me, I'll tell you this, I'm now in, you know, this, I'm in the climate change movement. And I know much like with Van, we sometimes talk, sometimes it's like, well, we just need to have a black face in the place. That ain't the way it should be. Because I can feel that in like 20 seconds. When I go some, when I go someplace, I'm like, all right, I'm just here because I'm just the brother talking about climate change. My goodness, okay, well, let me just, all right, the planet's getting warmer. Transition from fossil fuels, thank you. No, what I feel, particularly in our movements today, with Keystone and divestment and other movements, is solidarity. So when I go to artists, it's clear, like when you saw a communist, that's why I wanted want you to see that, is that I wasn't there coaching him. They were working through it that day. El Varda was working through it. Crystal Waters, Neo really worked through it. I mean, he was struggling. You know, Neo was, he was struggling. We had him do Earth song, Michael Jackson song. He was struggling, struggling to go through that process. But what I see now is that Neo now is on fire. So what we've done in our movement is that we will put forth people who are not really down. And I'll say this, that the other side knows that as well. They do. They can tell when you're not truly committed. And they know that they can break this process. And that's what they're waiting for. And so right now with these artists who are getting involved, I can't tell you, it's amazing. Um, they're organizing themselves. You mentioned Malik Youssef. Malik Youssef took his own money and went to Lima. Malik Youssef, next week, um, he, he was up for his fifth, he, he up for his 15th Grammy nomination. He has five already. Might get two more on Sunday. Right? That's, and then hopefully I get to carry it around and I'll do a picture for me on Twitter. He said, that's red with the Grammy in his hand. And so that's gonna happen this Sunday. But on the next week, that following, th on the 13th, he is divesting his portfolio. And he's asking Kanye to do the same. They have to organize themselves. We can't do that. And that's the difference. And I'm telling you, I think that, you know, I just will ask all of you as you are engaged in this movement that they watch you very carefully. They watch you very carefully. You'd be surprised. I, I never knew it that much. I knew it, I've been, I've been injured now with these cats for almost 13 years. But they watch you very carefully. And they watch to see if you're just, if you're just, if you're in this movement because it will be your 
next job? Or you're in this movement for life. And the one thing about a lot of folks in the, move, in, the, in, the, in the music industry, they come from the streets. And they can sniff out real quick your real motives, real quick. And they can look at you and they can know you can say all the right things and do all the right things and have all the great lingo. But they can know you're not really about this life, as they would say. And when you are about this life, fighting for our planet, fighting for the next generation, fighting to make sure that things that we transition, I'm going to tell you, nothing can stop you. Nothing can stop you. Picture you had of me, I think, I looked, uh, TC sent to me, I was, picture I got arrested at the White House. I told you earlier that I started the first green campaign with President Obama inside the White House. But when he was not doing right, was willing to come outside the White House and be arrested. Too many of us get inside and don't ever want to leave inside. I'm in the White House. I'm talking to President Obama. You have to be willing to give it up. In summer, if you ever saw it, some of you saw the movie, you haven't, you should see it. It starts with Dr. King getting the Nobel Peace Prize. 35 years old, imagine that, on the cover of Time Magazine, Man of the Year, with a Nobel Peace Prize. With a Nobel Peace Prize, you can just coast as Dr. King. But that's when he goes to Selma. Too many folks go to Selma to get the awards. And we as a movement at this critical time can't be going places to get the awards. If that comes, fantastic, great, wonderful. Thank you very much, I appreciate it. But we are at a lunch counter moment of life and death. And if 100 years from now, when they see this video and see the back of your heads and hear your questions, if they can see the video and we have not gone to two degrees hotter or three degrees hotter, if we hit four degrees hotter, they will not see this video. That's the difference. And so what we are fighting for is much different than they fought for in the 60s and 70s and 50s. We are fighting literally for a generation that doesn't even exist yet. That is so hard to give up your process for the next generation after us. But we can do it. And we must. Thank you all.